1989. The Berlin Wall fell, the White House grew a bush, I turned four, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles invaded the arcades. If you don't know who the Ninja Turtles are, well then, I'm just not going to tell you. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are a group of four anthropomorphic turtles mutated by some ooze and trained as ninjas by their rat sensei and named after four renaissance painters. Originally created as a comic series in 1984 by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, the Ninja Turtles didn't really catch on at first. The first comic miniseries was released several different times but garnered little attention. Then Eastman and Laird met licensing agent Mark Friedman and the Ninja Turtles just exploded in popularity. With action figures, play sets, comics, cereal, junk food, lunch boxes, underwear. You couldn't go anywhere in the 90s without seeing something with the Ninja Turtle on it. And of course that bled over into video games like the one we'll be discussing today. Ninja Turtles Arcade was developed by Konami and released in two versions in the arcades. One was a two player version that let each player choose which turtle they wanted to play, and the other was the four player deluxe model where position on the controls is what determined which turtle you were playing. I never actually saw the two player model. I didn't even know that existed until I did my research for this review. So how does it play? The controls are pretty simple, you have a joystick for moving and just two buttons, jump and attack. And really, that's all you need. This is truly late 80s button mashing at its finest. And of course works well in the Xbox Live Arcade version, which is what I'm playing here. There's not much difference between each turtle, though I'm told that Donatello is the slowest but does the most damage, Raphael and Mikey are fastest but deal less damage, and Leo is the Mario. The game is a pretty standard side-scrolling beat-em-up. You have a quasi-3D plane for extra maneuverability as you walk from section to section, being attacked by foot soldiers from all directions. Mashing the attack button makes each turtle do a combo, which differs slightly depending on the distance between you and your enemy. Sometimes you do a cool move, which throws foot soldiers across the screen, which pretty much finishes them off no matter how much health they have left. There's cheap enemies, level hazards, destructible items, and the bosses. Those cheap asshole bosses. But the game is still fun enough to keep pouring in those quarters. That's right, I still remember that mystical time before the token became the official currency of the arcade. But overall, the game plays pretty well and runs really smooth. At least in the XBLA version. Another big thing that kept people coming back was the awesome graphics. The attract mode was freaking awesome. Starting with a short animation pretty much ripped straight from the cartoon, whetting your appetite for more. And as soon as you put it in your quarter, you were rewarded with even more awesomeness. The backgrounds are bright and colorful and match the style of the cartoon perfectly. And the sprites are nice and big and well animated. And even in their pixelated form, all the characters are easily recognizable and look just like their cartoon counterparts. There's even some really sweet artwork between some levels that even changes depending on which turtles are present at the time. This was far beyond anything that was possible on home consoles at the time. Finally, that brings us to the sound. And just like all good arcade games, this game is loud and awesome. Once again, the attract mode does its job perfectly by mixing the awesome animation with a surprisingly high quality recording of the first few bars of the opening theme from the cartoon. The level music is pretty basic, but does have a couple of cool tracks that incorporate the main theme of the cartoon as well. Though you most likely won't remember it, as the sound effects usually drown out all the music. But that doesn't make it any less awesome. This machine was usually turned up good and loud, and every hit and explosion created its own symphony. Even the voice samples are pretty good. The turtles all sounded pretty similar, but all the characters that spoke sounded pretty close to their voices in the cartoons. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade isn't a deep game, 
or even a long game. Some of the enemies are kind of cheap and annoying, and that clang sound when you hit robotic enemies can get grating sometimes. Plus the bosses can be really cheap sometimes, especially that last fight with Shredder. But that's what arcades were for, eating up all your quarters. If it was too easy, then no one would keep feeding it. This game is a great game to just pick up and play for some quick button mashing, skull bashing fun. The enemy variation is pretty good, the sound and music is awesome, and the art style and graphics represent the cartoon very well. I was going to recommend picking this up on Xbox Live Arcade or PlayStation Network, but for some unknown reason, it was removed from both services back in 2013. If you have it downloaded but haven't played it in a while, invite some friends over and give it a whirl. Or if you manage to find an original cabinet at an arcade, then definitely give it a few tokens. It's a shell of a good time.